Hey guys, it's Tim, and this is Pro Wrestling Unlimited. It is Tuesday, November 7th, and tonight was SmackDown Live, and it was a pretty big SmackDown Live. I do want to say sorry we don't have a Monday Night Raw review from this week. We had some technical difficulties, some pretty major ones, but I don't want to bore you guys with any of that. Raw was an alright show. I mean, it wasn't nothing special. We got Pete Dunne on that show. We did have... The stuff with a new day coming out at the very end, costing the Shield the Tag Team Championships. But tonight, we're going to talk SmackDown. It was a pretty big show. We may have had an injury, and we did have a title change. So let's just get right on with it. So the show started off with a video hype package, talking about what happened last night, and talking about what's going to happen tonight, title match, Becky versus James Ellsworth, and so forth. So Shane McMahon comes out to start off the show, gets a pretty good reaction from the Manchester crowd, talks about how SmackDown shouldn't be called, should never be called the B-Show, says that Daniel Bryan will be back next week, and claimed that Kurt Angle was responsible for Kane attacking him. He then brought out the New Day as he was going to do some sort of like a celebration, I guess you can say, for what they did on Raw, and then they were interrupted by Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, where they ended up setting up a match between Kofi and Sami Zayn. Excuse me. All right, so we had Kofi Kingston versus Sami Zayn. I think this is the first time we've ever had a Kofi versus Zayn match, which it was a pretty good match. Kofi took most of the match until at the very end, Sami hit a blue thunderbomb for a near fall. Kingston then came back with a flying crossbody for the pin and the win, which was a surprise since they have been pushing Sami Zayn recently. We then had a backstage segment with Renee Young and AJ Styles. No, it was Jinder. This one was Jinder. My bad. We had a, a backstage segment with Renee interviewing Jinder, saying that AJ was just an appetizer before he's able to feast on the beast at Survivor Series. I don't know, that was, a, that was a pretty bad gender impersonation. We then had a Bludgeon Brother promo. They said, this is a horrible place. We're here to make it worse. No cage can contain us. No asylum can understand us. And when we're done, humanity will swell over Harper, Rowan, Bludgeon Brothers. Now, this kind of baffled me. So they had a match. It was Randy Orton versus Rusev. Rusev had Aiden English in his corner. If Randy Orton won... Well, no, if Rusev won, then Randy Orton... Nope, never mind. Did, reboot. Okay, so if Rusev won, he would make it onto the SmackDown Live team at Survivor Series. So I'm like, all right, AJ in the title match. If AJ wins, then he's not going to Survivor Series. Rusev's, I, I was just really thinking Rusev's going to win this. So Aiden English comes out to sing a song, and, and I'm, I'm going to recite these lines. He says, The Lion of Bulgaria who beat the Viper before. And tonight he shall defeat Randy Orton once more. He'll join Team SmackDown, so Raw beware. At Survivor Series, all will declare it's Rusev Day! And then the crowd started chanting Rusev Day, and let's go Rusev, and then we got an RKO chant. They then, oh, excuse me, hit the mic. They then cut backstage right before the match started to Shane McMahon in his, I guess you could say, office with Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura watching on. Match wasn't anything great. Randy Orton ended up winning with an RKO, and Rusev's not on Team SmackDown. So now this makes you think, who the hell is getting that last spot for Team SmackDown? And I'm going to give an unpopular opinion at the very end of this review. So James Ellsworth was outside the women's locker room and asked Tamina to find Carmella for him. He got Becky Lynch instead. Ellsworth said the women's revolution was getting out of hand, and she didn't have a chance against him tonight. He also noted that they were in Manchester, not Womanchester. Lynch told him, excuse me, Lynch told him those were some ballsy statements from someone who doesn't have any. We then had Becky Lynch and James Ellsworth. Ellsworth came out to Carmella's music. Charlotte Flair, Naomi, Tamina, Lana were all at ringside. This is a top of the hour segment. And the crowd chanted, Becky's gonna kill you. Where's your chin? So Elzer took off his shirt and appeared to be in worse shape than when he first came into the WWE. Lynch gave him an airplane spin to start off the match, and he fell to the outside. He was surrounded by all the women. Now, now remember, this wasn't a lumberjack match, but all the women from Team SmackDown were out there anyways, excluding Carmella. He just climbed back in the ring, turned around and saw Lynch, and so he shoved her down and pushed her to the outside. 
Lynch came back in with a flying drop kick for a two count. Ellsworth followed with a schoolboy for a two count of his own. Ellsworth turned up the band with no chin music, but Lynch caught him, reversed it into an atomic drop and an exploder. Ellsworth fell to the outside, and he wanted to leave, but Charlotte pushed him back in the ring. He pleaded with Becky and went to kiss her hand. As he did so, she applied the disarmor and got the win. Afterwards, Carmella came down, got in the ring, helped Ellsworth to his feet before, before she hit him with a super kick, and the crowd started chanting, yes. So I don't know what this means as far as Jimmy or James or whatever you want to call him being her dog or slave or whatever he was. But this could, this does look like they're done. Their, their quote unquote relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. We then in a backstage segment with Shane McMahon where he met with Charlotte and Natalia. Natalia offered to take Charlotte's place on Team SmackDown on Survivor Series in addition to also taking on Alexa Bliss. So she was, she was willing to work double duty. Shane recalled that Natalia barely escaped Hell in a Cell with her championship. So he said next week, we're going to figure out exactly who's going to take on Alexa Bliss as Natalia will be putting her title on the line against Charlotte on SmackDown. So championship match next week. We then had a WWE Tag Team Championship, no, no, SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin um, challenging the Usos. Before the match, the Usos cut a promo calling Gable and Benjamin American Alpha 2.0. Could also call them the World's Greatest Tag Team 2.0. Anyways, and they were the next victims of the Uso Penitentiary. The Usos then attacked them before the bell and it went straight to commercial. Match was very short and I think... There may have been an injury, but we can't confirm that. So Gable gave one of the Usos on the outside a very, very hard and awkward-looking chop block. He then, for some reason, did the chop block and scooted, like, like, I don't know how he did this, but he, like, hit the chop block, and as he was still gliding from the chop block, went under the ring. The announcers recall that the Usos uh, took out Gable like this kind of a year ago. And then Benjamin just stood in the ring and watched as the Uso, I I can't tell them apart really, one of the Usos did get counted out and Gable and Benjamin did win, but did not win the championship since you can only win the championships on pinfall submission. So they played it up like the Uso was injured, had a knee injury, but I can't confirm that. We'll have to see, you know, what, what news we get tomorrow. And we'll go from there. If we do hear anything else on one of the USOs possibly having a knee injury, we will let you guys know. They then plugged the new uh, show for USA Network, Damnation, where Luke Harper is actually going to be on a future episode. And they showed a clip where I guess he's playing some like old school carny wrestler. We then had the AJ Styles interview with uh, Renee Young backstage. Young said, <clears throat> Oh, my. Uh, AJ told Renee, sorry, AJ told Renee that she shouldn't take him lightly, no one should take him lightly, and he needs to focus on the task at hand. Styles says that he's often undersized, but he works harder than when that he works harder when that's the case, shows up earlier and leaves later than everybody else. He stole a line from Mahal and said that he would feast on the beast at Survivor Series. They then announced that next week on SmackDown Live, Sin Cara would be getting a shot at the uh, uni- no, no, United States Championship. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a frog in my throat or something. So then we go to the main event. Like, this show really felt like it just scooted right along really quickly. It was a two-hour show that, to me, I mean, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, but to me, it really felt like no more than like an hour, hour 15, hour 20 at the max. Like, this show just flew by. So we then had AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal, AJ challenging for the WWE Championship. Corey Graves said that the WWE title last changed hands on SmackDown in 2003 when Brock Lesnar defeated Kurt Angle. The crowd started chanting, you're on steroids, as Mahal was flexing in the ring. Styles tried a sunset flip early, but Mahal grabbed him and tossed him over the top rope. They then went to commercial. As they came back, Styles fought back off of a headlock and hit a dropkick and a forearm. He went for a slingshot dive, but Mahal grabbed his leg, dropped him face first on the apron. Mahal then tossed Styles onto the announce table and gained the control. Styles then finally came back with strikes, sliding forearms, fireman carrying neckbreaker, only to get a two count. Styles applied a calf crusher on Mahal, 
And they really played it up like this could have been the finish. The announcer was like, can Mahal get out of this? AJ Styles got it really roped in, but a but Mahal did get to the ropes. Styles tried more strikes, but Mahal countered with a pretty good clothesline. You know, in all honesty, if you haven't seen this match yet, I would go back and watch it. Not just for the finish that we're going to get to in a second, but it was probably Jinder's best match in the WWE, so that is saying something on AJ Styles. Back to the match, Styles dropped Mahal to the outside, then hit a slingshot forearm to the outside as well. Styles followed with a 450 splash in the ring, but the Singh brothers pulled Mahal out of the way. Styles then attacked the Singh brothers and laid them both out at ringside. Styles then went for the phenomenal forearm, but Mahal grabbed him and nailed him with a coloss. He seemed to have it all won, but then Styles got his foot on the ropes and the crowd went nuts. Like the crowd was into this match from the beginning, but when AJ got his foot on the rope and the ref called it off, was like, nope, nope, it's only a two count. The crowd just from the, from here on out was just into it and just going crazy. So Mahal seemed like he wanted to try the Coloss again, but off the top rope this time, and Styles countered it into a stunner over the ropes. He like um they were both up on the top rope, and AJ kind of fell down, almost like in a stunner position, and pretty much just wretch, wrenched um, Ginger's neck on the top rope. <clears throat> Styles then climbed back in the ring, jumped up on the apron, jumped up on the top rope, hit the phenomenal forearm, and got the one, two, three, and became the new WWE, I guess, cha WWE champ. Do they? Let me know in the comments below. Do they still call it WWE heavyweight champion? Or is it just the WWE champion? But anyway, as soon as that referee count of three, the entire crowd, like when AJ hit the forearm, everybody you could see stands up. The referee counts one, two, three, and they just go completely apeshit crazy. Like this crowd went nuts when AJ won the championship. Tom Phillips said this was the first time the WWE title actually changed hands outside of North America. Mahal then shoved down the Singh brothers as AJ Styles celebrated and Mahal walked to the back. Now it looks like we're going to be getting AJ Styles versus a Barack Lesnar at Survivor Series. And let me go back to Survivor Series. What did I say earlier? I'm going to say an unpopular opinion on who might get that fifth spot in the, in the men's 5-on-5 five -five match. Jinder Mahal. It was supposed to go to AJ. So you think, okay, AJ's now the champion. Give it to Rusev. But Rusev didn't win the win the opportunity to be on the Raw men's team. So who are you going to put in that spot? What other, what other top name do you have on SmackDown other than Rusev that's not a champion? Jinder Mahal. So, I mean, I don't know that to be true. I don't know if that's exactly what's going to happen. But if you need to put your, I guess, quote-unquote, best guys, why not put the guy that was just the last world champion, the last WWE champion, Jinder Mahal? So, I mean, let me know your guys' thoughts on SmackDown in the comments below. If you are watching here on YouTube, if you're listening on Patreon or you're listening on iTunes, let us know how you like these shows. Give us a rating on iTunes, Patreon, you know, just keep doing what you do. We appreciate everybody who supports us on Patreon. And that was SmackDown. We will be live, Nick and I, tomorrow night for the Pro Wrestling Unlimited podcast. Same time, same place, YouTube, live, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. I hope you guys did enjoy this SmackDown review, and we'll see you next time. Have a good night, guys.